Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today is Nick Smart, who is program manager for the Halo Trust in Stepanagert, Varapach. And I'll explain all that in a minute. Nick, welcome to CivilNet. Thank you. Um, the Halo Trust is an international organization, British, that demines in how many countries around the world? Uh, currently 14. 14. Currently 14. And you are the program manager in Parapar, which means that you spend your time removing mines <laughs> from fields. That's right. Um, how did you get into what is an unlikely line of work? Uh, well, mine's a slightly strange story. I was a school teacher before this. Um, Natural lead in. <laughs> So I wanted a more peaceful life. You know, yes, so right. <laughs> yeah, from children to boys. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, so I, I wanted a change of career basically, and uh, I saw an advert in a magazine for the Halo Trust, and uh, started looking into it. And the more I found out about it, the more interesting it sounded. So uh, that's that's my background. Yeah. We should probably explain what is perhaps obvious to some people, and that is that mines are those explosive things that government's army's place in order to blow up the other guy. Yeah, you could say that, yeah. And then when the war is over, what happens? Yeah, unfortunately not in all cases, but in the majority of cases, those landmines remain behind and they indiscriminately kill or maim anyone that steps on them. People, cows. Exactly, people, animals. Um, and the Halo Trust demines, removes mines. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, our, our philosophy is that uh, well, our, our, our motto is getting mines out of the ground now. We don't, um, you know, we don't get sidetracked by conferences or, or, or anything else. Our, our, our main drive is to get as many people on the ground clearing landmines as efficiently um, and, and quickly and cheaply as possible. And you're obviously in Radapag with the blessings of the Radapagi authorities. Yeah. And how do you do your work? Who does the actual work? Well, again, this isn't something another thing that Halo prides itself on and that we, we believe in having a local solution to a local problem. So we recruit and train local people um, to deal with that problem. So currently in, in Karabakh we have 140 staff of which I am the only expatriate. All, all the other 140 staff are locally trained Karabakhis. Um, and that has its um, benefits in a, in a number of ways. Um, a lot of the, our senior staff have been with us since the beginning. We were there in 2000. Um, so they have 12, coming on to this to be their 13th year of experience. Um, and, and, and that counts for a lot. But also a lot of these local people, they, they fought during the war. So their, their local knowledge, you know, they have first-hand experience of fighting in the war. They know where these battlegrounds and minefields are. Um, so that's hugely beneficial as well. Um, but, more, but more importantly than that, um, um, and an added benefit is that, that we pay them wages um, and so that the money goes back into the local economy as well. So it's a win-win it's a situation really for Halo and the, and the local. So strategically, who decides whether you clean in areas within Radapar, surrounding Radapar? How do you make those strategic decisions? Well, we, we prioritise um, based on humanitarian need. Um, obviously, we're a humanitarian demining organisation, so wherever, wherever there is an, a, a safety issue, that, that comes first and foremost. However, um, in Karabakh, there are political issues um, that we have to take into consideration um, regarding our donor money. Obviously, we're a charity, all our money comes from donors, um, and from government donors, we are restricted in the areas in which we can work. Um, Currently, USAID is our, our, our main donor, um, and they, um, we have to use their money to only clear in traditional, what we call traditional Karabakh. That's the Soviet era Karabakh. Autonomous, Autonomous oblast, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So in the surrounding territories, USAID money cannot be used. Absolutely not, no. So how do you do that? Where does that money well, come from? Well, thankfully, we, we have one other private donor, a British foundation called the Reese Foundation or Pearson Engineering um, and they currently fund one manual clearance team as well as a mine risk education team and an explosive ordnance disposal team so that we can if somebody for example finds a hand grenade in their back garden and they live in green areas we can actually send somebody out to deal with it. What's a green area? 
sorry, excuse me, a green area is, um, is a, a neutral term that we use to uh, define the area outside of traditional Karabakh, but within Armenian held territory. Um, so we call that, some people call it occupied territory, other people call it liberated territory, we call it green areas. Green. Um, the, so two things. One is that the American aid agency, USAID, is the, the biggest supporter, and I think that's something American Armenians ought to hear loud and clear and express <laughs> thanks where that belongs. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other is that then it's additional funds that are necessary in order to clear off more of the, the green areas, the territories surrounding Karapakh. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, we've, we've, we've done a tremendous amount of work over the 12 years we've been there, and, and we're nearly, you know, we've only got four or five years left of, of work left in traditional Karabakh um, as, as things stand at the moment but the majority of the problem unfortunately now lies in in these green areas that's where 75 percent of the remaining problem is now at the moment as I said to you previously we've only got one eight-man team that can can clean in green areas now at that capacity that will take approximately 80 years to clear now if if we had 10 teams doing it that would be eight years, 20 teams, four years, and so on. So obviously, the more money we can get um, and the, the bigger capacity we can employ in these areas, then obviously, the quicker we can get rid of the problem. Maybe it would help if you explained the implications of the problem. In other words, I get it. If there's a mine and I walk over it and I'm maimed, that's not good. Uh, if cows walk over it, I lose an animal, I understand. But there are greater implications than that, aren't there? I'm assuming that if, an, if the population suspects that an area is mined, yeah. um, they're not going to go there. They're not going to plant there. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's not just a humanitarian... Well, it, uh, the humanitarian impact is not just about life and limbs, it's about economics as well, as you, as you rightly pointed out. If, if a farmer can't farm the land, then obviously he loses out. Um, and, and, and that really is the majority of, of, of the areas that we work in. It's farmland. A, a lot of it is farmland that's prohibited because of the landmines. Um, and, and so, yeah, th that there is an economic uh, need to clear as well as a humanitarian one, yeah. Is there a bigger strategic question at stake? In other words, the Halo Trust, which is an organization that lives on, you know, with, through donations, is it possible that the organization in Britain will wake up one morning and say, okay, enough of Gharapah, we'll move on somewhere else? I mean, do we need to work with the organization at the, at the most central levels too and express thanks and lobby and so forth? <laughs> Yeah, well, obviously, the more support we can get, the better. But, but again, Karabakh does not, on principle, leave countries um, just because the money runs out. I mean, if, if the money runs out, you know, Halo ha builds up central funds to cover shortage of funding in, in, in countries that it works in. And, and um, we've been in problems in the past in other countries where core funds has had to be used to bridge a gap between funding. And, and that will be, that'll be the case again in Karabakh if we struggle with funding. So, no, we don't just desert a country because the money's run out. Um, but what it does, it does put a, a lot of pressure on us to try and win funds for Karabakh. Um, and Karabakh is a very different, difficult country to win funding for because of the political, because it's a frozen conflict. You know, traditional Karabakh is very hard to find funding for, but the green areas is even more difficult, even more contentious. And, and, and that's where we really rely on, on private donations. Um, that we're working very hard on, on, on getting. Does the Halo Trust work in Azerbaijan? No, it doesn't, no. no. Is there a reason? Um, not, uh, <laughs> how can I put this? Um, we don't work, the Azerbaijan do not want us there. Azerbaijan have their own national uh, capacity. Um, they're fairly successful in dealing with their, with their mines issue. Um, and Azerbaijan lobby against the Halo Trust winning funds in Karabakh because they see us as, uh, as, as working on occupied territory. So they're, they're, they're not particularly friendly towards the Halo Trust. So the bottom line is that the Halo Trust does as much as it can with the capacity that it has. Today's capacity in Gharapal is largely thanks to whatever support there is from USAID and the capacity in the territories surrounding Gharapakh uh, are based really on donations. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and unfortunately, that, that's, that's, the, that's the area we need the money for. Um, areas around Lachin, 
people now called birds or um, you know that, that's where the biggest problem is and and, and, and it's really um, the private charities that we, we, we need to we need to ask for, for, for money to continue last working question there. what's mm. the annual what's the right word damage loss casualties casualties um, well, last in, in total since uh, 1995, there's been 270 accidents that's resulted in 346 uh, fatalities or, or, or casualties. Um, last year there were six, but thankfully no fatalities. Uh, five accidents resulting in six casualties. The most serious being a, a shepherd in Kabatli, again in Latin region. Um, he was actually from Armenia and he was herding his sheep over the border and, and trod on a PMN2 landmine and lost his right leg. Um, so unfortunately accidents are going to continue to happen um, you know, until we clear the last mine. And the land is going to remain untilled and unused. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Nick Smart, Thank you. Program Manager for the Halo Trust. Uh, we will include information about the Halo Trust on the website and I think it goes without saying that this is as humanitarian a need that also has strategic importance. Uh, thank you for watching Civilman.